Hi my friends, how are you? I hope everybody is fine. My name is Daniel Villarino. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In the last video, I mentioned that from Argentina, I brought with me a steady rest. The people from the company Holzberg Argentina gave me this steady rest so that I would test it in my workshop. Now, there are a couple of situations when steady rest come really handy. One of them is when you have a long spindle. The other one is when you have a piece that you are hollowing and you are doing the hollowing quite far away from the chuck. In that case, to secure the piece there, the steady rest is going to provide us with a very uh, nice uh, tool. Now, in terms of what today's project is, I want to make a walking stick and I have this piece of pine that you can see here. It's pretty long. It has 50 inches in length, that's 1270 millimeters and you can see here that it has one inch and a half by one inch and a half square section that's about 38 millimeters by 38 millimeters that means that it's going to give us roughly a one inch and a half cylinder in the best of the cases okay once we have it roughed out I made uh, I found the center and I made a small perforation there this is where the life center is going to be placed. In my particular case, the life center has a cup and a conical section inside that can be displaced in or out. I'm going to let it out just a little bit to fit in that small hole, but the cup is the one that is going to make the pressure on the face. That way I don't run the risk of splitting the wood alone because the grain is running in this direction. On the other side, I also mark the center and then I use a chisel, a square chisel, uh, to make these two um, dents where are going to fit exactly with the spurs of the spur center. And that way I don't run also the risk of splitting the piece of wood. Now, at the beginning I'm going to use the spur center to drive it, but at some point I'm going to make a tenon on one side and with that tenon I'm going to hold the piece using a chuck because that will be more secure. Now, what happens uh, when we have a piece of wood, a cylinder, uh, mounted on the lathe? Typically, uh, because of the characteristics of the wood and because of the fibers of the wood, if the length of that cylinder is more than 11 times the diameter, then we are going to begin to have some uh, flexion in the, in the piece and that is going to produce vibration. Vibration is uh, really a problem because when we are turning, if we have vibration in the wood, then that's going to cause us uh, a situation in which the finish that we are giving to the piece is not the best. Uh, many times when you are uh, turning a very long spindle and you have vibration in the center and even if you are using a very sharp skew chisel, what will happen is that you have sort of like a ripples that run in a helical kind of way on the surface of the, of the wood. So the finishing is not going to be good and that is in the best of the cases, in the worst of the cases, you can really have a very nasty catch. So, how do you avoid the vibration? There are a couple of ways. Um, turners that have a lot of experience, they use their hands. Uh, on one hand, if they are right-handed, let's say, they hold a skew chisel, for example, and with the left hand, they sort of wrap it around the cylinder in such a way that they counteract the pressure that they are putting with the tool with the pressure that they are putting with the other hand. And they can do it overhand, or sometimes they pass the hand from below the tool race and do it that way. But in any situation, uh, you are risking uh, having an accident. So it's not what I really recommend unless you have a lot of experience doing this. I think the steady rest is the best way to go. And the project, as I said, is a walking stick. Uh, the piece is pretty long. It's going to test the capacity of my lathe. I don't think my lathe has the capacity to do it this long, 
I will have to remove a couple of screws from both sides so I can separate the headstock from the tailstock as much as possible to hold the piece. I have it this length because it's the length that is more comfortable for me because of my height but uh, if uh, I can't I will try to cut it down a little bit uh, to have a secure and safe turning. So that's today's project. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to work. This safety pin avoids the headstock from falling out of the lathe's bed. If we remove it, we can carefully slide the headstock a few inches more towards the stream, allowing us to gain a bit on the maximum length that we can turn. the steady rest in the lathe's bed. I will separate a bit the arms with the wheels and I will slide the steady all the way towards the headstock, leaving it there for the moment. I will place the tailstock as far to the stream as possible. Even so, I had to cut an inch from the blank length. I mount the pine blank between centers and I try it at 950 RPMs. You can see already a lot of vibration, particularly in the central section. I will turn close to the tailstock to form a tenon that later I will hold with the chuck. hold the blank in the headstock, I will use this set of long jaws. As you can see, for such a long piece of wood, there is a lot of flexion. I am going to wrap up the blank at the center to see if I can make it enough of a cylinder 
to place the, the steady. I am cutting with a very sharp roughing gouge, barely rubbing the barrel to avoid exerting too much pressure and taking very light cuts and still every time I touch the wood with the tool the blank tends to flex. I switch from the roughing gouge to the skew chisel, also super sharp, to see if the situation improved, but I am still having the same problems. Here you can see the result of turning with so much vibration. The yellow arrows show small catches that have damaged the surface. The blue arrows show a spiral pattern generated as a consequence of the tool sometimes touching the wood and sometimes not, due to the vibration. Even though we could not get a perfect cylinder, what was achieved is more than enough to place there the steady and help eliminating part of the vibration. We make the wheels touch the wood without exerting too much pressure. With the steady rest installed, I can now turn close to it without suffering too much from vibration. I am going to work on a segment to make it cylindrical and then move the steady there. After a few minutes I decided that I am going to try something different. I am going to work on the stream, move the steady rest there and then work segment by segment until I rough out the whole blank. Every time I round up a new segment, I move the steady and go to work in the next segment. That way I was able to cylinder the whole blank. Now I will move to the headstock side and I will repeat the process but now doing finishing cuts with the skewed chisel freshly sharpened. You can see the beautiful shavings produced when the skewed chisel is really sharp and there is no vibration in the piece. And so I keep repeating the process until I reach the tailstone.
and turning now the central segment that I showed earlier in the picture. There is a big difference in the finish out of the tool when there is no vibration, as you can appreciate in this comparison of before using the steady rest and after using it. With the pipe cutter I eliminate the threaded ends of the bronze nipple. With the file I eliminate the internal burrs. I measure the internal diameter, but before fixing it in the caliper, I give it just a hair more so that it will give me a safety margin when reducing the good cylinder at the end. I prepare a bit of two-part epoxy to glue the nipple to the wood. I put the bronze nipple and I hammer it first with a small piece of wood so that I will not dent it and then I make sure that it reaches the bottom using a thread piece that I cut before. I remove the bulk of the squeeze out with a paper. I don't worry much about getting it too clean. Once it has cured well, I will sand the nipple and give it finish just like the rest of the stick. On the other end, I will make some decorative details and also I will make the diameter a bit smaller so that the hand will grasp comfortably the handle. I move the tool rest to the other side of the steady rest and I place the steady rest in the center of the thinner part to finish working on the handle. For the finish, I will sand through the grids from 80 grit up to 600 grit. Then I will apply abrasive paste and finally friction polish. I 
I'm going to turn around the working stick to shape and finish the tip of the handle. With a thin parting tool I cut the leftover and now I will have to do a bit of sanding and finishing of the lathe. With sanding paper I remove the excess of wood at the tip so that the wood and the nipple are going to be flush. This way the working stick is finished. Okay my friends, I finished making the working stick. Uh, you can see it here, this is the handle, a little thinner so that the hand can wrap around uh, comfortably. And then it's uh, pretty long and it has on the bottom this bronze wow fitting that I put there to give it more resistance to the part where the stick is touching the, the floor, the ground. In terms of the steady rest, I really think that it worked pretty well. I could not have been able to do the, the project without it. Actually, if it had had another one, it would have been even better. In reflecting uh, about the process, um, actually, you know, one thing that would be nice is to have two tool rests, one on each side of the steady rest, so that you don't have to uh, keep moving and, you know, unscrewing and screwing again the tool rest from one side to the other whenever you are working on one side of the project or the other side of the project. But besides that, it worked pretty well. Um, the other thing that uh, I think it would be nice in terms of the um, design. The steady rest ring is molded out of an iron angle bar, which is cut in such a way that makes it possible to weld it to the base. The welding was done on a long line on one side as seen by the yellow arrows, but just on a small point on the other side of the ring, where the internal ring touches the base. Because of this, the whole structure is better supported on one side than in the other. Perhaps a possible improvement will be to add a couple of metal supports, like it is shown in red in the figure of the right. This could give more stability to the ring structure respect to the base. The base was designed specifically for my lathe, with a length of 7 inches and a width of 40 inches. I believe that it could be a bit wider on one side of the ring to provide better contact between the base and the lathe bed. I just said to extend it just on one side because we do not want the base to hinder the placement of the steady when trying to get it close to the headstock. And if we are working on the tailstock side, in the worst of the situations, we could just turn the steady around so that the longer part of the base is facing the headstock and it will not hinder its placement. Finally, the knobs used to fix the base to the lathe bed and to release it felt a bit small. The ones in this prototype had a circumference, without considering the indentations, of approximately 1 inch and 3 quarters. Knobs of up to 2 inches and a half could be used and these knobs will be still small enough to avoid hindering each other. 
but they will facilitate the user the operation of tightening and untightening the steady rest to and from the lathe bed. I would like to clarify the fact that this steady rest is a prototype and the people from Holzberg asked me to provide an objective critique since they want to improve the design. This steady rest is the largest they have made so far and it is probable that the smaller diameter steady rest will not require these modifications. Also, I would like to mention that Jose and Mauro from Holzberg listen a lot to what their clients have to say to improve the model since they are interested in making a product that is of the best possible quality. I am going to include links to the Facebook and YouTube pages of Holzberg so that you can see in those sites these and other products that they are manufacturing. I could not have done this project without the steady rest. When I put the piece on the lathe you could see the vibration hopefully uh, because I am recording this uh, right after the, the project and I haven't begun the editing of the, the video yet but uh, hopefully you will be able to see uh, how uh, much the, the piece was vibrating and looking backward I guess I will probably change a little bit the order in which I made the things uh, at the beginning I tried to uh, well first uh, round up the one side and then I tried to do the same in the middle but because it was a square and I couldn't have the steady rest yet there it was really difficult so I think the next time I do something like this probably what I will do is begin working on the headstock which is more steady and uh, make there the first section uh, cylindrical place the steady rest there and then begin you know, moving the steady rest as I keep progressing towards the tailstock. That was basically what I did at the end and uh, it worked pretty well. And you could see uh, in some of the pictures the, the striations that were formed on the wood when there was vibration. And then uh, you will see some of the pictures of the finished product there are no striations because the steady rest help a lot in, in reducing the vibration and, and the tool work much better once I was closer to the steady rest. So all in all, uh, a great uh, tool, a great uh, accessory for the lathe. Uh, the project is really simple besides this detail on the top and this on the bottom is just a cylinder. I didn't want to do much more than that, even uh, a broom handle can work as a, a walking stick, but I wanted to test the steady rest and I think because of the size of this particular uh, um, piece, it was a, a nice test for, for that accessory. So um, I'm going to put some pictures of the walking stick at the end of the video and I'm going to put there as well some pictures that were sent by the subscribers of the channel. Juan from Navarra, Spain made these two candy boxes, one with acacia and the other with Spanish juniper. They look fantastic, Juan. Leandro from Valencia, Spain, made his bangles out of almond wood for his wife, Isabel, following the example of one of my videos. Excellent work, Leandro. And Francisco, from Almodóvar del Campo, Spain, made his lamp base in olive wood. Great job, Francisco. And here you can see some pictures of the walking stick. I hope you enjoy the pictures. I also hope you enjoy this video. If that's the case, please don't forget to mark the like button down below, make comments, and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. That way, 
every time I upload a new video, you're going to receive a notification. And it will be until the next one. Cheers!